connective tissue, um, just like any other tissue. You describe the tissue based on the cells as well as the extracellular matrix, really. That's what we discussed last time. So meaning that this tissue, we are going to tackle the the cells. But before we go into those details, we look at the functions of this tissue. What are the functions of connective tissue? Anyone who can, uh, who can give us one? No answers. Yes. For protection, isn't it? Yes. So for protection, uh, uh, we discussed this last time. Uh, for instance, the bone, bone tissue, and uh, uh, of course we have uh, various bones which protect vital organs. For instance, uh, the brain is well protected within the skull, okay? Uh, the heart, uh, the lungs within the thoracic cage, okay? Uh, and many other vital organs are protected by connective tissue, okay? So good, what else? What are the other functions? Yes. Come again? For support, yes, yes. Very good for support. Uh, connective tissue provides support. Okay? Uh, last time I gave an example of uh, imagine you not having a skeleton. Okay? Not having a skeleton. You will just be a heap of meat on the ground, isn't it? Because there is no supportive skeleton. So the connective tissue uh, provides support. Provides support. Yes, sir. Come again, sorry. Transportation, yes, yes, yes. So transportation, transportation of various uh, substances, uh, a good example, for instance, hormones, uh, for instance, electrolytes, and so on, they get transported also through uh, connective tissue, okay? Uh, for instance, blood. Blood uh, has plasma, okay, as well as uh, blood cells, but you find a number of things moving through blood. It's a very good example of, uh, you know, connective tissue that is able to transport various uh, substances, hormones, degrees, uh, for instance, from the pituitary gland, blood secretion, all the way down, for instance, to the uh, adrenal glands or to the, uh, to the gonads. Okay. Yeah, so transportation, very good. Any other function? Same hands. Yes, sir. Come again. For locomotion. Okay. Unless you say it provides, uh, uh, you know, attachment sites. Attachment site, uh, for instance, skeletal muscles, okay? So provides attachment sites for skeletal muscles, okay? Uh, but otherwise itself uh, it, uh, doesn't really move, uh, you know? Yeah, so, yes, sir. Defense mechanism, yes. Defense mechanism, okay? Uh, good examples, white blood cells. White blood cells are part of connective tissue, okay? So they... Uh, uh, the defenders against various uh, microorganisms and many other things. Good. Do we still have other functions? Yes, sir. Energy storage. Energy storage. Very good. Energy storage. Okay. For instance, adipose tissue uh, is part of connective tissue and uh, uh, provides uh, energy. Okay. Can you imagine yourself going for days or weeks minus, you know, minus eating? Okay, so your uh, your fat tissue 
will start, you know, releasing energy. So you start getting energy from fat tissue. Okay, you learn that uh, in biochemistry. Okay, you learn of uh, the various uh, mechanisms that can generate energy in the body if you have not eaten. Okay, so one of the sources is fat tissue. So you start using fat, ketogenesis, for instance, you know, uh, giving us ketone bodies. Those ketone bodies, they are then processed to generate glucose and energy at the end of the day. Good, so energy storage. Energy storage. Uh, uh, so a good example also, you know, uh, if you're on the fat side, okay, and if you're on the lean side, if you compare the two, when it's very cold, obviously the one on the lean side, you you feel colder than the other one, isn't it? Yeah, because of the energy reserves in the body. Good. Any other? <coughs> yes, madam. Provides framework for for organs and repair of damaged tissue. Yes, yeah, so for again uh, for for repair of damaged tissue. Okay, so inflammation, for instance, uh, you know, you learn inflammation. Okay, uh, I think you learn it in immunology as well as pathology. Report there. So inflammation. Uh, uh, you know, provides at the end of the day uh, full repair. Okay, so damaged tissues get repaired. Okay, very good, very good. We know inflammation. Anyone who can define? We have never come across inflammation. Okay, uh, we'll leave it there. Yeah, so uh, basically inflammation is a defensive uh, mechanism, okay, uh, to, uh, uh, to an insult, okay? Uh, of course, not uh, the insult that you may, you may think of. No, so to an insult, your body. For instance, imagine you have a foreign body in your, in your, in your, uh, in your body, okay? Uh, for instance, a needle or a stick or whatever uh, in the, uh, it has entered your body, okay? Uh, the response will be inflammatory to try and remove that insult, okay? To try and remove that foreign uh, uh, object which is in you. And so, it will send, you know, white blood cells to that site. It will send various uh, uh, chemicals, okay, and so on. So that eventually you have pass correction around that place, and then uh, you know an abscess forms, and uh, when you uh, uh, you know drain the abscess, you are draining together with the foreign substance. Okay, so inflammation is basically a defensive mechanism, protective mechanism to our bodies, uh, to various uh, uh, substances, microorganisms, or any foreign substance trying to enter your body. If you cut yourself with a knife, again, there will be an inflammatory process to, to repair that, uh, that defect, okay? And the outcomes of inflammation, they are basically three. Uh, one uh, could either, either you go into what we call resolution, completely you go back to normal, okay? The original state where you were, okay? Or it could be healing by fibrosis, where a scar forms and it be permanent. You always remember that I injured myself way back in Pedro Five, for instance. Okay? Uh, so there is evidence for that. Okay? Or the acute inflammation becomes chronic uh, and it takes time to heal. Okay? For instance, you know, chronic diseases like TB, okay, you end up having chronic inflammation. Anyway, so for food repair or repair of any uh, organs, we still have other functions. So in general, I think those are the main uh, functions of uh, this tissue, connective tissue. Okay, so let's know the functions. We go to classification. Classification, how do we classify connective tissue? How do we classify connective tissue? Did we do this one last time? No? 
We did it class five. Okay, so class, classification of uh, connective tissue. How do we classify connective tissue? Anyone who can give it a try? Yes, sir. Connective proper and the connective special. Connective tissue proper. Okay, good. Connective tissue proper is one of them. Connective tissue proper. Good. Any other? Yes, sir. Supporting connective tissue. Not really, not really. Yes, sir. Title. Embryonic. embryonic, yes. So embryonic connective tissue. Embryonic connective tissue. So one embryonic connective tissue, two connective tissue proper. Okay, connective tissue proper. Now that connective tissue proper, we can subdivide it into into what and what? Yes, sir. Dense, yes, yeah, so into loose and dense connective tissue. Okay, so connective tissue proper is divided into dense, I mean loose and dense connective tissue. Now the dense connective tissue, we can further uh, subclassify it into what and what? Yes, one up. Regular and irregular connective tissue, depending on the arrangement of the fibers, the protein fibers. Okay, so if there's a clear pattern where, you know, the collagen fibers uh, or the elastic or the particular fibers, but of course, collagen fibers, where the collagen fibers, they are nicely arranged parallel to each other, then that will be regular uh, dense connective tissue. Okay, regular dense connective tissue. But if the collagen fibers, they are haphazard, uh, you know, there's no proper pattern, Okay, they are intertwining or whatever, there is no clear pattern, then that is irregular, dense connective tissue. Irregular, dense connective tissue. So, um, we need to know that we have embryonic connective tissue, connective tissue proper, divided into uh, loose and dense. Then the dense is subdivided into uh, regular versus irregular connective, uh, connective tissue. Okay, yeah, those two, then, any other, number three? Yes, sir. Specialized connective tissue. Specialized connective tissue, very good. Specialized connective tissue. For instance, I think someone gave cartridge. Okay, so specialized connective tissue. Specialized connective tissue. Okay, so one of them is cartridge. So A, so under specialized connective tissue, we say A, Cartridge, P, yes, sir. Blood, very good. Blood, uh, C, adipose tissue, good. Adipose tissue, which is fat tissue. Uh, D, yes, sir. Bone, okay, good. Bone. So there are four uh, specialized connective tissues four specialized connective tissues. So blood, cartridge, blood, I mean um, bone, and the adipose tissue. Now cartridge, cartridge, uh, we have how many types? How many types of cartridges? Yes, sir. Come again. Three types, good, three types. What are the names for the three types of cartridge? Hyaline cartridge. Hyaline cartridge, which is the most abundant. Hyaline cartridge. H Y A uh, L I N E. Hyaline cartridge. Okay, so that's the most abundant type of cartridge in the body. Apart from hyaline cartridge, yes, madam. Elastic, elastic cartridge, good. Elastic cartridge. And the third one? Yes, sir. Fibrous. Fibrous. Oh, what fibrous? The third one? Same hand there, yes, sir. 
five bro cartridge. Didn't we say five bro cartridge? Oh, we said elastic. Okay, good. Yeah, so five bro cartridge. Not five brass, but five bro cartridge. Five bro cartridge. As one way. Five bro cartridge. Okay, so these are the three types of cartridges. Everyone is expected to know the three types of uh, cartridges in the body and the various locations. Okay, uh, there will be uh, a lecture on cartridge, a separate lecture. So uh, you learn these three types of cartridges, they are historical features in detail. For now, we are just mentioning. Okay, good. So those are the specialized connective tissue tissue types um, yeah so we have mentioned uh, embryonic connective tissue which is basically as uh, the name suggests is a connective tissue found in the embryo in the embryo isn't it? so in the embryo okay? uh, during development okay? uh, basically mesenchymal tissue mesenchymal uh, mesenchymal tissue uh, giving us embryonic connective tissue then we have uh, con uh, connective tissue proper, which we have already highlighted. Then specialized connective tissue, okay, and we have uh, subdivided them, okay, we have mentioned them. The fourth one is what? Ah, by the way, the loose connective tissue, we can also call it what? Yes, sir. Areola. Areola, okay, areola connective tissue. Okay, areola connective tissue. So in case you come across areola connective tissue, that's basically loose connective tissue. Loose connective tissue. We'll come to that, I'll project the pictures. Um, yeah, the fourth one. Yes, sir. Reticular connective tissue. Yes, reticular connective tissue. Reticular connective tissue is a special type of uh, tissue as well uh, because it's found in certain organs, certain organs in the body, okay? Such as which organs? Such as which organs? Yes, sir? Liver, very good. Bone marrow. Bone marrow, good. Liver, bone marrow. Thymus, thymus gland, there's a gland in the neck here, thymus gland, not thyroid, but thymus, thymus gland, lymph nodes, lymph nodes, and spring. Okay, so these are the organs where, where you can find reticular connective tissue. Okay, so we need to know, we need to be aware of organs. Uh, where we can find particular connective tissue. Okay, so lymph nodes, spleen, uh, uh, thymus, uh, bone marrow, uh, liver. Okay, yeah. So those are the organs where we can find uh, reticular connective tissue. So most of the organs of the uh, reticular endothelial system, reticular endothelial system, they have this type of tissue. Good. Apart from reticular connective tissue, <coughs> any other tissue? Tissue types? So that one is number what? Number four. Number five? So you have what we call mucoid. Mucoid connective tissue. Mucoid connective tissue. Mucoid connective tissue. So this tissue is found uh, uh, a good example where we can find mucoid connective tissue is in the umbilical cord. Umbilical cord. Okay. The umbilical cord is a structure that connects the developing embryo fetus to the placenta. Okay. To the placenta. I'm sure we know the umbilical cord, isn't it? Yeah, at birth, it's cut so that you detach the baby from the placenta. Okay, basically there, what you have done is uh, more like you have uh, strangulated the baby. Okay, where you have tied yourself in the neck. That's what happens. Right? So when you cut that cord, 
Okay, it means now there will be no blood from the placenta going to, to the baby uh, to deliver oxygen and uh, nutrients. So at that particular point, it's like uh, you are, the baby is being strangulated. Okay, and so uh, it will gasp for respiration and it will produce the first cry, which is an inspiration. Okay, so the first cry uh, pushes air in into the lungs, opens up the alveoli. Okay, uh, the alveoli or air sacs. But now breathing can be initiated. Okay, so uh, that's the umbilical cord. Now this cord has blood vessels. This cord has blood vessels. Uh, do we know the number of blood vessels in the umbilical cord? Anyone? We are not studying in advance. <laughs> I expect people to, to be studying in advance. Come on, so. Uh, people, you are still at introduction to anatomy. You struggling with that till you are posting. That's a true fashion. <laughs> uh, uh, so, how many vessels? So there are, yes, madam. Sorry? Three, yes, it's good. So there are three blood vessels. So you can see, uh, people are studying that one. So there are three I blood vessels. Google, yeah. Okay. How many arteries out of those? Yes, sir. Two. Two arteries. Yes. So two umbilical arteries and one umbilical vein. Initially, there were, there were four. Okay, during development. Early development, there were four, two veins, two arteries, but one of them disappeared with time. Okay, it disappeared, and uh, and that is the, the right umbilical vein. So the right umbilical vein disappeared. So that vein in the cord is basically the left. To be very specific, is the left umbilical vein, and then we have the two umbilical arteries. So there are three vessels. Okay. Uh, now, these vessels, they are delicate. They are delicate, and so they need to be protected. They need to be protected, and uh, the protection is by this so-called mucoid connective tissue that surrounds these vessels. So the mucoid connective tissue uh, protects these delicate blood vessels. Okay? And uh, it has a special, or rather it has a name, uh, this mucoid connective tissue surrounding vessels in the cord is known as, uh, it's known as what? It's known as what? Watton's jelly or jelly of Watton. Okay, the spelling for Watton is a capital W, because the name of someone. So capital W, then H-A-R-T-O-N. So Watton's jelly, okay, apostrophe S, if you want to say Watton's jelly or jelly of Watton, okay, so this is the mucoid connective tissue in the umbilical cord. Other places uh, where you can find, so there, that's the most important structure, but you can find also um, in the pulp cavities of bones, pulp cavities of bones, I mean uh, teeth, sorry, not bones, pulp cavities of teeth, Okay, so teeth, they have pulp cavities, okay, and you can uh, find uh, mucoid uh, connective tissue as well there. So, that's number five, isn't it? Yeah, so basically that's uh, the classification of uh, connective tissue, connective tissue. So let's know all these uh, five different types of uh, connective tissue. Let me try to project some pictures. So this picture is just trying to illustrate uh, the transit cage, the transit cage for the thorax. Okay, and we can see uh, from here that the transit cage is osteocatragenous. It's osteocatragenous, meaning that. Uh, it has bone and cartridge. The cartridge in blue, you can see the blue color there, that's a cartridge. 
we came, and then the uh, it's yellow. That's the bone part. Now, when you look at this, um, the cost of cartridges, the cost of cartridges are these ones. Yeah. So these ones in front of the ribs, okay, which are holding the the rib, the bone part to the stainer. So these are the uh, cost of cartridges. These cost of cartridges, they are made of what type of cartridge? Out of those three, cost of cartridges, <coughs> higher line, okay, higher line. So cost of cartridges, higher line. cartridge. If you look at the vertebral column at the back, okay, at the back you can see the discs, okay, in between the vertebrae. So in between the vertebrae, we can see those uh, blue structures, which are intervertebral discs. Intervertebral discs, uh, they are made of what type of cartridge? Come again. Which one? Elastic. Elastic. Ah, no. Okay. Yes, for us. Fibro cartridge. Okay, fibro cartridge. So, uh, intervertebral discs, they are made of fibro cartridge. Okay, so it's just a picture to illustrate the cartridges. Okay. So there's a, a table here to highlight the, uh, the classification of connective tissue. So let's start with this one, embryonic connective tissue. You can see it's mesenchyme. Okay, we can see the ground substance there, the mesenchyme cells, fibers. What are mesenchymal cells? What are mesenchymal cells? Yes, one. Okay, good. Yeah, so uh, of course, not all the cells, but uh, most of the cells, they are derived from mesenchymal cells. So mesenchymal cells are undifferentiated undifferentiated connective tissue cells. Undifferentiated connective tissue cells giving rise to various cells in the body. Okay? They give rise to various cells in the body. Uh, most of the cells that come from these uh, enzyme cells, they are fixed cells. They are fixed or resident cells. Okay? So uh, that's what we mean. So they are undifferentiated. Okay. Uh, your intake, okay. Uh, if you want to study medicine, you need to make points in first year. Okay. So uh, first year in those days, uh, it means you are undifferentiated. Okay, undifferentiated. You don't know what program you will do. Okay. So you are undifferentiated. Uh, come second year, okay, now uh, you are differentiated now. This one makes it farmers and so on, okay? So even these uh, mesenchymal cells, they are undifferentiated. Uh, they are like stem cells, okay? They are stem cells. So we can see uh, uh, these uh, various cells, uh, mesenchymal cells. We can see the ground substance. And uh, there is an embryo here. Okay? A section has been cut. Uh, to illustrate uh, uh, the embryo, okay? So primarily the location is in the embryo. <coughs> loose connective tissue. So the loose connective tissue, okay? So again, we can see here, uh, so what do we mean by loose connective tissue? So it's on the soft side, here. Okay, so it's a connective tissue that is on the soft side. It's not, it's not hard. It's not dense. Okay, so uh, it has almost an equal proportion of uh, uh, cells and uh, extracellular matrix. Uh, the elastic, I mean the protein fibers, as well as the ground substance. Okay, and we can see the various uh, uh, cells there. Okay, the fibers. Okay, all the fibers will be there. Okay, collagen. 
elastic, reticular as well, okay? But mostly, of course, collagen uh, predominates, okay? So collagen fibers, uh, you can see the, the fibroblast cells, okay? Uh, fibroblast cells, these are fibroblasts. Fibroblasts, they are cells who lend the cells uh, shortly. Uh, these are cells that, you know, produce the uh, extracellular matrix. Okay, both the uh, protein fibers as well as uh, the ground substance. You can so an example here. Uh, the best example where you find uh, loose connective tissue is the lamina propria. The lamina propria. I understand by now we have done epithelial tissue. You can so. Uh, an epithelium rests on a basement membrane or basal lamina. And below the basal lamina, we find the lamina propria. That lamina propria is basically, you know, loose connective tissue. You can see from here. You can from this uh, picture here. Okay, we can see the, uh, the lamina propria. Okay, uh, just below an epithelium. Just below an epithelium. Okay, one of the characteristics of epithelial tissue is that, uh, you know, it's a vascular, meaning no blood vessels. So the lamina propria has blood vessels, and uh, the blood vessels here bring nutrients, uh, bring oxygen, and uh, they take away waste products from the uh, overlying epithelium. Okay? Yeah, so... Uh, this is loose connective tissue. Okay. You can say adipose tissue. This is adipose tissue. So adipose tissue has fat cells. It's a specialized type of uh, uh, connective tissue. It has, you know, adipocytes or fat cells. Okay. Now there are, there are two groups of uh, fat tissue. We have brown fat as well as white fat. Okay, so uh, this one is white fat uh, because uh, we can see that the nuclei they are pushed to one side, creating a giant, uh, a giant uh, 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 locu. Okay, uh, uh, there's a space. Okay, there's a space here. Okay, the nucleus has been pushed. Uh, to one side, like a signet ring. So the appearance is like a signet ring. Okay? And uh, uh, this is so because we want to, uh, these cells, they want to store as much energy as possible uh, within that cell. Okay? So storage of uh, triglycerides, triglycerides. Okay? So white tissue, white adipose tissue is there for storage of uh, energy in the form of triglycerides. But brown uh, fat, brown fat, uh, you know, the cells, they have uh, a lot of uh, locus, okay, a lot of uh, small vacuums, so to say, okay, and uh, with a lot of mitochondria uh, within them. Uh, the function of brown fat is basically for heat generation, heat generation. Thermogenesis. Okay, so that is a brown, uh, brown fat. When you compare a neonate, newly born baby, uh, and uh, an adult, uh, in terms of proportion, uh, you find that uh, uh, you find that uh, a, a newly born baby uh, has a lot of uh, brown fat, brown fat compared to an adult. Okay, for obvious reasons, isn't it? Because we know that brown fat is there to uh, generate heat, generate heat. Okay? So when a baby is born, it, 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 it needs to be uh, kept warm. Okay? So that's why we have a lot of uh, uh, brown fat in neonates compared to adults. Okay, so this is uh, adipose tissue. Again, you learn adipose tissue, separate <laughs> reaction. This is, uh, again, another uh, example of uh, loose connective tissue. 
Okay, we can see the fibroblasts, okay, the, the other, uh, other cells like macrophages, plasma cells, and so on. Okay, um, this is a blood vessel. Okay, another blood vessel there. Okay, and you can see the collagen, the collagen fibers, and the elastic fibers. Okay, then filling the space between cells and the protein fibers is the ground substance, the ground substance. This is reticular connective tissue, reticular connective tissue. So again, uh, you need to develop histological eyes, okay, histological eyes. Just by projecting this, you should be able to tell that this is reticular connective tissue. If I project the previous one, Okay, you should be able to tell that this is loose connective tissue. Okay, so in general practicals, that's how we examine it. We just projected a, a slide uh, and asked you to identify it, okay, and give reasons uh, for, for, for it. Okay, so for instance, this one, okay, uh, it's reticular connective tissue. Why? Because we can see uh, the darkly stained uh, fibers, okay, uh, uh, and the stain that has been used here is what type of stain? Since we have, uh, we have studied stains now, what type of stain is this one? Yes, uh, yes, sir. come again. Very good, excellent. Silver stain, okay. So silver stain uh, is the stain we use uh, routinely to stay reticular connective tissue. So we can see the various uh, uh, reticular fibers, okay, reticular fibers, okay, which are the protein fibers, member, collagen, elastic, reticular. So these are reticular fibers, reticular fibers. Reticular fibers, they are basically type 3 collagen fibers. Okay, so uh, we can see that, and we can see the cells, okay, the reticular cells. So the reticular cells, you know, next to the fibers. The reticular cells also being stained by uh, the silver stain. Okay, and uh, basically forms a, more like a network, uh, a meshwork of some uh, sort, okay, uh, creating, you know, spaces creating spaces through which other cells can move, okay? So like a 3G uh, network, okay? So network, and there are certain cells can start passing through there. For instance, in the lymph node, in the lymph node, we know that uh, in the lymph node, cells, white blood cells pass there. Antigen presenting cells, getting an antigen from another place, okay? Takes that antigen to the, uh, to the lymph node. And if not, they are like barracks of soldiers, barracks of soldiers, okay? So when you get the, when the antigen presenting cells get the uh, microorganism, they take to the barrack, which is the lymph node, uh, for destruction, okay? Inflammation takes place there. That's why sometimes if you have a wound on your foot, okay, you may have a swelling in your groin area. Okay, you have a lymph node that has, uh, that has, that is solid and is painful, okay, because that cut in the foot, microorganisms there enter, they are captured, they are brought uh, to these uh, 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 lymph nodes, okay, for this, uh, destruction. So it means that we need to create spaces within reticular connective tissue through which cells uh, uh, should be able to pass. Okay, and we have already highlighted the various organs, lymph nodes, bone marrow, spleen, and so on, thymus, okay? uh, 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 those uh, various organs. This is another picture uh, to illustrate uh, reticular connective tissue. Reticular connective tissue, we can see uh, uh, this one and the other side. So we can see the cells, the reticular cells. So these reticular cells, they are basically fibroblasts found in the reticular 
uh, tissue, fibroblasts found in the reticular tissue. Okay, so these are the cells. And you can see the fibers. Okay, so the cells, they are next to the fibers. And when you stain, you can see that what I can measure or a network with spaces to allow uh, cells to move. So this is reticular tissue. Mucoid, connective tissue, we can see mucoid, connective tissue. Uh, we can see the nuclei, they are, they, are, they are spaced. Okay. So an example, a section of an umbilical cord shows large fibroblasts surrounded by large amount of very loose ECM containing mainly ground substances rich in hyaluronan uh, with wisps of collagen. Okay. So histologically, it resembles embryonic mesenchyme in many respects, and rarely found in adults. Okay? So this is a, a mucoid connective tissue. Dense irregular okay, connective tissue. You can see dense irregular connective tissue. You can see the nuclear of fibers, I mean, uh, of fibroblasts, and we can see the collagen fibers, you know, uh, in a haphazard manner. If you uh, check this one as well as this one, you can see a clear pattern. Okay, a clear pattern in terms of arrangement of the nuclei, okay, or for the fibroblasts and for the collagen fibers. Okay, so this is dense regular. Now this uh, this uh, dense uh, connective tissue forms various structures, various structures in the body. We can see here. Uh, ligament, okay, ligament, the tendon, so this we find there dense connective tissue. So dense connective tissue, uh, regular forms, you know, ligaments, forms, tendon, okay, the other one, this one, the regular one, an example is a, 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 a joint capsule. Joints are surrounded by capsules, okay, so capsules. What are the other structures which dense connective tissue can form? Not really separating it to regular and regular, but just in general, what are the other structures which dense connective tissue can form? Apart from ligaments, apart from you know uh, tendons, apart from joint capsules, what are the other structures? Sorry. What are the other structures? Yes, sir. Aponeurosis cells. Okay. Aponeurosis cells. Okay. So, aponeurosis cells. Okay. So, that is plural for aponeurosis. And aponeurosis, okay, uh, an aponeurosis is a structure that connects what? It's a structure that connects what? Same one, yes. Muscle to muscle. So a skeletal muscle to another skeletal muscle. A good example is the rectus sheath. The rectus sheath uh, on the anterior abdominal wall, okay, where we find these recti abdominis muscles, they are enclosed, and then they are connected by uh, uh, the aponeurosis. Okay? So yes, aponeurosis, uh, tendons, ligaments, joint capsules, what else? We have also uh, meninges, a red of meninges. Meninges are membranes that allow the CNS, the CNS being the brain and the spinal cord. Okay, so the brain and spinal cord is surrounded by, you know, uh, meninges. How many meninges? There are three meninges that surround the brain and spinal cord. What are the names? Anyone who knows the name of many years? <coughs> so we have Jura Mata, Jura Mata, okay? uh, we have Arachnoid Mata, 
and tear matter. Yeah? Uh, pure matter, arachnoid matter, and tear matter. So I've, I've listed them uh, from outside to inside. From outside to inside. So the outermost is dura matter. It's very uh, hard. It's a hard uh, structure. Again, followed by arachnoid matter and then tear matter. Tear matter is closely adherent to the brain, closely adherent to the spinal cord. You can't separate it. Okay? You can't separate it from there. In between uh, pia and uh, arachnoid, we have the subarachnoid space uh, where we find the uh, uh, CSA, cerebral spinal fluid. Have we done left tissue not yet? So th those are meninges. That's why you hear of uh, meningitis. Formation of the meninges. When those meninges get inflamed, we call it meningitis. This one uh, is basically, yeah, dense regular. Okay, it's another uh, picture to illustrate uh, dense regular connective tissue. Look at the regularity. The cells, the nuclei, they are arranged in one line like that. Then you have the fibers also. So there's a clear pattern, like they are parallel, parallel to each other. But when you look at the irregular ones, they are just haphazard. Okay, this is hairline cartridge. Uh, of course, uh, I've already highlighted uh, the coastal cartridges. We find hairline cartridge. Looks like this, but you are going to read this uh, under cartridge. Elastic cartridge, uh, a good example, the ear. Okay, so the pinna, pinna of the ear. Okay. Uh, is basically elastic as well as epiglottis. Uh, epiglottis is uh, uh, another example. Okay. Fibro cartridge for the intervertebral discs. Okay. Fibro cartridge. Okay. Cubic symphysis. The cubic symphysis is this uh, uh, blue structure here. That's the Cubic symphysis is cartridge. Okay, so uh, uh, it is found between the two uh, cubic bones. Okay, the hip bones in front. Okay, there is a cartridge. Okay, there is a cartridge there, which is basically fibro cartridge. Fibro cartridge. This cartridge, uh, sometimes during labor, uh, we can utilize. Uh, 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 by cutting it, and uh, uh, the baby can pass, can pass if there is obstruction. Of course, uh, we don't normally do that nowadays. It, uh, it is an uh, old uh, way of managing uh, CPGs, the pelvic disproportion. Modern obstetrics, we don't normally do that. But if uh, maybe in situations where uh, there is no choice, you can. Uh, cut that uh, cartridge, okay, and then the baby will pass. Okay, but we don't do that. We don't do that because uh, afterwards, okay, this mother will struggle. Okay, will struggle to uh, to walk. Okay, because you have cut here, and so there is no stability. The gait will be affected. It takes long for this to heal. Okay, so we don't do that. We don't do that. Okay. This is basically bone. Okay, bone is a specialized connective tissue. Okay, again, bone is a separate lecture. You learn uh, bone, bone tissue. This is blood. Okay, you can see the various cells, neutrophils, lymphocytes, red blood cells, okay, and uh, the plasma there. Okay. So um, we have done the uh, general introduction. Now we're going to the cells. Uh, the extracellular matrix we discussed last time. Uh, we discussed the, the, the fibers and uh, uh, the ground substance, okay? uh, those various components of uh, ground substance. The same things. Okay? So we discussed uh, 
the components of connective tissue, okay? Uh, extracellular protein fibers. These are the protein fibers. Then the cells, okay? The resident cells, we can see here the various uh, cells, mesenchymal cells, macrophages, lipocytes, fibroblasts, and so on. Okay? So this, that is connective tissue. Okay. Uh, we, we did this uh, slide. So for the extracellular matrix, I think uh, there is nothing much here. The only thing maybe uh, is that fat fibers, the various types, and so on. Okay. So look at this condition, Ehlers Danlos syndrome, okay? Uh, it's a disorder uh, of connective tissue. It's a connective tissue disorder, okay? Who can do this? <laughs> so you can see there is uh, uh, joint hypermobility, uh, skin ex uh, extensibility, and tissue fragility, okay? Uh, because of defective collagen. You can pull your skin like this, okay? You can see that it extends, okay? Uh, very elastic, kind of arrangement. Uh, you can bend your finger like that, backwards, uh, and sometimes you can actually uh, make it touch uh, the dorsal aspect of the hand, okay? So it's a, it's a disorder. Okay, sometimes those uh, people who like uh, uh, some form of dancing where, you know, uh, they, are, they, 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 they claim that their joints, they are, they are hypermobile and so on, they can flex in whatever direction they want and so on. Some of those are disorders. <laughs> So we can see here the meninges, the meninges, okay? So this is dura mater, uh, dura mater, okay? So lifted up off uh, the brain, okay? So you can see uh, this is uh, dura mater, it's a meninge. And uh, you know, it's made of dense regular connective tissue, dense regular connective tissue, okay? Functions of brown substance, I think this one we did last time. Okay. Uh, the, the, the various uh, collagen fibers, we can see the collagen fibers there. Okay. Uh, composition and distribution of glycosaminoglycans. Okay. We did the various types of uh, glycosaminoglycans. So let's look at origin of uh, connective tissue, uh, special cells. Okay, remember, we mentioned mesenchymal, uh, mesenchymal cells, mesenchymal cells. So this picture illustrates uh, uh, a mesenchymal cell, which is undifferentiated, and then it differentiates to give rise to various cells. Like I mentioned, mesenchymal cells, they give rise mostly to the resident cells. For connective tissue cells, we can divide them into two groups. You can remember our table? Okay. We did that, uh, that summary table okay, of the various uh, tissues. We said the, the type of cells in the connective tissue, we can group them into two. Those which are resident and those which are wandering. Now, the resident ones, they come from, uh, mostly they come from uh, undifferentiated mesenchymal cells. Undifferentiated mesenchymal cells. So look at the various cells. Fibroblasts, for instance, they come from uh, mesenchymal cells. Okay? Adipocytes, or fat tissue, they come from mesenchymal cells. Chondroblasts, okay, chondroblasts, which convert to chondrocytes uh, within cartilage. Okay, so again, they come from mesenchymal cells. You can look at the osteoblasts. The osteoblasts for bone tissue, okay? These osteoblasts 
they convert uh, to osteocytes. They came within bone tissue. So all these we can see that they are coming from undifferentiated mesenchymal cells. Uh, smooth muscle cells, okay, uh, as well as endothelial cells and mesothelial cells. They all come from uh, these, uh, I mean, uh, these are uh, undifferentiated mesenchymal cells. Okay? Of course, the smooth muscle cells, the endothelial cells, mesothelial cells, they are not really cells of connective tissue, they say, no, because uh, different tissue. That is epithelial as well as uh, muscle tissue. In terms of, uh, uh, of our interests, uh, these ones fibroblasts, adipocytes, chondroblasts, chondrocytes, osteoblasts, osteocytes. Okay? They are uh, connective tissue cells coming from mesenchymal cells. We have another source of cells, the hematopoietic stem cells hematopoietic stem cells in the bone marrow. Okay, in the bone marrow. The bone marrow has hematopoietic stem cells. These cells, they give rise to the cells in blood tissue, to the blood cells. The red blood cells, which are the, uh, what we call red blood cells in, in medicine. <laughs> Erythrocytes. Erythrocytes. Okay. White blood cells? Leukocytes. And uh, platelets, thrombocytes. So these are uh, cells, they come from hematopoietic stem cells. Okay? So hematopoietic stem cells, they give rise to the blood cells. And we can see here, uh, megakaryocytes, this one is the one that gives rise to the thrombocytes, the platelets. So platelets come from megakaryocytes. Megakaryocytes themselves, they come from hem hematopoietic stem cells. Okay, so uh, you can see the, the sequence in there. Uh, lymphocytes, the B lymphocytes, which convert to plasma cells. Okay, uh, you can see there. So plasma cells, they come from B lymphocytes. The monocytes, you can see there. Monocytes giving rise to macrophages. Okay, macrophages. You can see the Langerhans cells in the skin. The Langerhans cells in the skin, okay, they come from hematopoietic stem cells as well. Microglial cells, okay, uh, in the CNS, brain and spinal cord, they also come from uh, hematopoietic stem cells. Osteoclasts in the bone tissue, they also come from hematopoietic stem cells. Okay. In fact, uh, Langerhans cells, microglial cells, osteoclasts, uh, we have another type of cell found in the liver, what we call those uh, uh, special cells found in the liver, which are related to these cells. Related to the Langerhans, osteoclasts, uh, microglial, Yes, sir. Kufa cells. Kufa cells. Okay, Kufa cells. Very good. So, Kufa cells. Okay, so Kufa cells in the river. <coughs> what about in the lungs? In the lungs? What are the special cells found in the lungs? Related to Kufa cells, related to osteoclasts, related to Langerhans cells. So, these are basically macrophages. They are all macrophages. Uh, it's just that they are named differently because of their location and uh, where they are found. Otherwise, they come from the same source. They, uh, uh, they come from what we call the monocyte, uh, mononuclear, phagocytic system. Monocyte, mononuclear, phagocytic system. Okay? Uh, so that system gives rise to Langer cells in the skin, microglial cells in CNS, osteoclasts in bone tissue, Kufa cells in the liver, uh, dust cells, we call them dust cells or lung alveolar cells in the, <coughs> in the uh, lungs, in the lungs. Okay? So these are the various uh, cells. 
Um, mast cells, you can see mast cells. They also come from hematopoietic stem cells. <coughs> Sorry. Neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils, and red blood cells. They all come from hematopoietic stem cells. Okay? Yeah, so these ones, majority of these ones, they are mobile. They are wandering cells. So wandering cells, they come from hematopoietic stem cells. Six cells, they come from mesenchymal cells. Okay. So we have classified cells of collective tissue into fixed and wandering. Let's start with the wandering cells. The wandering cells. So the wandering cells, remember, we grouped them into three. Erythrocytes, thrombocytes, and leukocytes. What's the function of thrombocytes? <coughs> so we are looking at the functions of uh, cells of collective tissue. Functions of cells of collective tissue. And we are starting with wandering cells. And wandering cells, we are started with erythrocytes, which are the red blood cells. What's the function? Anyone? This one is in blue. What's the function for red blood cells? There's one. They transport oxygen. Okay? Because they have, they have what? Hemoglobin. They have hemoglobin. Okay? So when you look at the structure of a red blood cell, a mature red blood cell, uh, it doesn't have a nucleus. So they are unnucleated cells. Why? Because we want to create more space for hemoglobin. That hemoglobin is the one that binds oxygen and transports it throughout the body. So that's the function of uh, a red blood cell. And you can see the, the disc shape of uh, a red blood cell. We go to thrombocytes, thrombocytes, which are the platelets function. Yes, sir. Come again. Blood protein, isn't it? Yeah. So for blood protein mechanisms. Okay, so platelets they are important in the protein cascade, uh, the protein mechanism, so to say. Protein mechanism. They are the first ones to be involved. Okay, so uh, protein uh, we can also refer to as hemostasis, not homeostasis, but hemostasis. So hemostasis. So we have primary hemostasis and secondary hemostasis. When you injure yourself, okay, uh, initially there will be primary hemostasis that needs to take place. When you injure yourself, you have injured a blood vessel. When you see blood coming out, it means the uh, blood vessels have been cut, okay, be it capillaries, uh, arteries, and so on. Okay, now blood vessels, uh, we know that they are lined by uh, an epithelium. <laughs> What's the name of uh, uh, the epithelium that lines blood vessels? Come again? Yes, sir. Endothelium. 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 Yes. So that's a special name uh, to <coughs> sorry. So an epithelium that lines blood vessels. Okay. Now, what is the what what um, endothelium? Uh, is what? What type of epithelium is it? Yes, sir? It's a single epithelium. It's a what? Single. Single epithelium. Yes, it's a single epithelium, but uh, one the proper full single description. Yes, madam? Come again? Simple squamous epithelium. Okay? Good. So, an endothelium is a simple squamous epithelium. <coughs> Okay, so always remember that if you are naming an epithelium, you must name it using two principles, the number of layers for that epithelium, as well as what? The shape of, the shape of what? The 
shape of cells. Not enough to just say the shape of cells. The shape of cells on the topmost layer. The shape of cells on the topmost layer. Okay, so you might have a stratified epithelium. Okay, uh, at the base you may have columnar cells followed by cuboid dog. Okay, followed by squamous on top. So the epithelium will carry the shape of the topmost layer, not not the one at the bottom. Okay, so shape of the topmost layer and the number of layers. That would be a full description. So if you are going to give an answer to say simple uh, simple epithelium, for instance, simple epithelium, you know, this this one is a simple epithelium, or you say this one is a squamous epithelium. It's not the name of that epithelium. Really. So it must carry both the layer and the shape of the topmost layer. So simple squamous epithelium. The stratified columnar epithelium. Stratified cuboidal epithelium. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I was saying uh, when you uh, win yourself, so a, a blood vessel is cut, it means you have tempered with the endothelium. The endothelium is damaged. When there is damage to the endothelium, that endothelium, the endothelial cells, they have chemicals. Those cells, when they are injured, they release chemicals which attract, which attract platelets to that site. So they attract platelets to that site, and then the platelets will aggregate. Okay, we will aggregate, form a platelet plug to try and seal the defect. Okay, to try and seal the defect. But now this platelet plug is um, is delicate, is soft. Okay, so you need a second mechanism, which is the secondary homeostasis. Uh, basically, the clotting factors they need to be involved. So clotting factors, quadration takes place so that now. Uh, a fibrin mesh goes to cover this platelet plug uh, to make it, uh, uh, you know, uh, stable. Okay, to make it stable. So platelets they are important in primary hemostasis. Primary hemostasis. Uh, leukocytes. Now leukocytes, the white blood cells, uh, we can divide them into two groups. Leukocytes, we can divide them into two groups. What are the two groups? Anyone who knows? <coughs> two groups of leukocytes. Yes, sir. Leukocytes and no, no. Yes, sir. Yes. So, are granulocytes and granulocytes. Are granulocytes and granulocytes. Are granulocytes means these cells, they don't have special, you know, uh, they don't have granules containing special uh, substances which we can use to scan and identify them. Are we clear? We are not saying that our granulocytes, they don't have granules. No, they have granules. But now these granules that they have, they are non-specific. They are non-specific. And so, you can't use those granules, you can't stain them to identify them. You can't stain and identify them uh, using those granules. Okay? But the granulocytes, the granulocytes, they have granules containing substances which we can utilize to stain and identify them under the microscope. Are we getting the difference? So our granulocytes, they have granules but they are non-specific granules. Uh, the granulocytes, they have granules which are specialized, which are specific, okay, which are specific. And we can use uh, those granules, we can stain and identify these cells. Okay? So what are the are granulocytes? Are granulocytes? So because I so can actually just that there's no bot here. You can, you can say leukocytes, then 
we divide it. This side, we have uh, our granulocytes. In this side, you have the granulocytes. Then now we come to the agranulocytes. Agranulocytes, what are the, the agranulocytes? We have uh, basically two types of agranulocytes. Two, the monocytes and lymphocytes. Good. So the monocytes and the lymphocytes. Are we together? So the monocytes and the lymphocytes. The lymphocytes, we can further subdivide them. The lymphocytes, we can further subdivide them into what and what? Yes, B and T lymphocytes. It's actually the third one. It's the third one. Yes, sir. Natural killer cells. Natural killer cells. Okay? Abbreviated NK cells. Okay, now NK, not the no knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> That's natural killer cells. So natural killer cells, okay? So there are three types of lymphocytes. Natural killer cells, uh, the main function of natural killer cells is uh, to kill what? Yes, cells infected by pathogens. Cells infected by pathogens. Okay, they can help in that way. But mostly, this here. Yes, yes, madam. Tumor cells. Yes, tumor cells. Those cells which want to, uh, to cause cancer. Okay, those uh, uh, tumor cells which are, are carcinogenic and they want to uh, s uh, spread and cause cancer and so on, okay? Uh, not the uh, infected, they say. Infected means the, the, the microorganism inside, okay? So, uh, natural killer cells, they, uh, they, they kill tumor, tumor cells, okay? The B lymphocytes, B lymphocytes, what the function? Lymphocytes? Yes, sir. Come again? You produce antibodies. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, your hand was up. You wanted to say what? The same answer. Yes. Come again? Yes. So they convert to plasma cells. Then plasma cells generate what? Antibodies. So they don't, uh, uh, B cells they don't produce uh, antibodies directly. They have to be converted to plasma cells. And then plasma cells generate antibodies. Okay? As you can see from here, B lymphocytes converted to plasma cells. Plasma cells produce antibodies. What are the various uh, antibodies found in the body? What are the main antibodies? Antibodies? Anyone who can give us an example of an antibody? Yes, sir. The IG, the IG what? IgM, okay, yes, so IgM, so how many types in total? Five I. types, so IgM, yes sir? IgM, IgM. very good, IgM, IgE, IgE, IgD, yes, IgD and IgG, okay? <laughs> yes, so those are the antibodies. Okay, those are the antibodies. Okay, so for those who like, who like chunky, mm -hmm. you know chunky? <laughs> those who like chunky, you create an acronym. Yeah, everything. You have to remember these things. Okay, so I don't know how many acronyms you are going to create for you to reach 70, 60 years. Don't forget the acronym. <laughs> so, uh, GAM GAME, okay, GAM GAME, G -A -M -G -E. G -A -M -G -E. 
income base. So IgG, IgA, IgM, uh, IgD, and IgE. Okay? Those are the antibodies. You learn them in immunology in detail. Okay? For now, we are just highlighting. IG, IG what? What is that IG? Immunoglobulin. Okay, so now prevention for immunoglobulin. So immunoglobulin M, immunoglobulin E, immunoglobulin A, and so on. Antibodies are glycoproteins. Are glycoproteins. Okay. All right, so these uh, antibodies, they, they help to defend us against the, uh, uh, against the microorganisms and so on. Uh, for instance, which antibody out of these five, which antibody uh, crosses the placenta uh, to provide innate immunity in the baby? When the baby is born, is born with uh, a certain type of immunity. Which one? 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 IgG, okay, IgG. So those will be some of the MCQs. Which one of the following immunoglobin crosses the placenta uh, to provide innate immunity to the newborn? So IgG, okay, IgG. Why? Because it's a smaller molecule compared to the to the others. The others are uh, bigger molecules, and so they can't cross uh, the placental barrier. Okay, but IgG antibodies. They are small uh, molecules able to cross the placental barrier. Okay? Good. That's why sometimes uh, you find that, uh, and these, remember that these antibodies, they are produced in response to a disease or in response, yeah, so in response to an infection, for instance. Uh, so, for instance, if you have uh, measles or you have uh, rubella or HIV and so on, the body will respond by producing antibodies specific uh, for that uh, for that infection. Okay, specific for that infection. So that at the time of birth, okay, uh, for instance, if it's a, a pregnant mother with rubella, let's say a pregnant mother with rubella. Okay, uh, that uh, pregnant mother with rubella, uh, the antibodies specific for rubella will be generated in the mother. And we are going to have the IgG antibodies specific for rubella. The mother is going to have IgG antibodies specific uh, for rubella. Now, this IgG will cross the placenta and go to the baby. So when the baby is born, and we are going to do an antibody test, okay? The test will be positive. Meanwhile, the baby is not infected with rubella. Why? Because those are maternal antibodies which are in the baby. And so if you are going to do an antibody test, the test will be positive, but that just shows you that the baby is exposed, not that the baby is infected. Okay? So you need a, a second test uh, in order to try and find out whether the baby is infected or not. What type of test is that? That you can do to confirm whether the baby is infected with repair or not in this case. Difficult. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, polymerase chain reaction? Yes, PCR. You can do a PCR. Gene, RIN, RIN, PCR. Okay, so that's about plasma cells, the antibodies. Um, the other one was, uh, and by the way, these antibodies, they attack, um, uh, they attack microorganisms outside the cell, outside the host cell. So B lymphocytes provide what we call humor or immunity. Immunity is divided into uh, innate immunity and 
So if you, are, if you are exposed to a number of uh, microorganisms, it means you are going to respond to those various uh, uh, microorganisms and create antibodies specific for those various infections. So at next time you are attacked by the same microorganism, the body already has antibodies to fight back. Okay? That's why they say that too much hygiene is not good. <laughs> Yes. Uh, the hygiene hypothesis uh, says that uh, uh, you know if you have uh, hygiene, too much uh, hygiene, it means you're not going to be exposed to various uh, substances in the environment. Okay. Uh, so uh, even your immunity will be limited to the few that you have been exposed to. Okay. And uh, your immunity will not be strong enough to fight various types of microorganisms, okay? If you take, for instance, someone from the West comes here, okay, to Africa, because there there's a lot of hygiene and so on, they are not exposed to various uh, microorganisms. They come here, they catch infection easy. Maybe just a simple flu, they are gone. <laughs> yes. Uh, all of that, okay? Some of the clues that you have had, including basically COVID, COVID virus, okay? But uh, the unit. Okay, so that's that. So, uh, B lymphocytes provide acquired immunity in the form of humoral immunity. Humoral immunity to do with antibodies. Humoral immunity. Whereas uh, T lymphocytes, T lymphocytes provide yes acquired immunity, but which type of acquired? Cell mediated. So remember, immunity divided, innate versus acquired. Acquired divided into humoral versus cell mediated. So the humoral T cells, cell mediated T cells. So T cells provide uh, cell mediated immunity. Now, the T cells they kill uh, infected cells, cells which uh, are basically intra intracellular microorganisms, intracellular microorganisms. If you have a host cell and it's infected with uh, a microorganism inside. In order to, to kill that microorganism, you need T cells uh, to destroy the entire cell. The entire host cell goes together with the microorganism. Okay? But for the antibodies, they fight microorganisms outside the host cell, the extracellular microorganisms. Now, T cells, they are further divided. T cells are further divided into what and what? Yes, sir. So we have memory T cells, good. Memory T cells. Come again. So I, I didn't get that one. T helper cells, yes, very good. T helper cells. T helper cells. Yes, sir. Yeah, the cytotoxic cells. T cytotoxic cells. Okay, cytotoxic. Toxic T cells. Now, uh, the cytotoxic T cells and the T helper cells, we can name them according to, uh, you know, immunohistochemistry, okay? So, uh, we can uh, give them numbers, what we call CD numbers, okay? What's the CD number for T helper cells? CD4, isn't it? Yes. CD4 T cells. CD4 T cell. What about the cytotoxic? CD8. CD8. And what is this CD? What does CD stand for? Yes, sir. 
good. Cluster of differentiation. Cluster of differentiation. Okay? So cluster of differentiation. So you can use cluster of differentiation numbers uh, to name uh, T helper cells as CD4 T cells and then to name the CD8 T cells. Okay, so yeah, so we have listed three so far memory T cells, uh, CD4 T cells. Suppressor T cells. Suppressor T cells. Okay, what's the function of, uh, uh, let's say, memory T cells? Memory T cells. <coughs> so these ones, as the name suggests, they keep what? Memory. Mm -hmm. So they keep memory to defend you next time you have the same disease. And sometimes uh, certain diseases, if you have them. Uh, uh, once you may not have them again. Okay. A good example is uh, uh, chicken pox. So if you suffered from chicken pox when you are young, you never have chicken pox again, despite having an outbreak. There's <coughs> an outbreak of chicken pox here. If you had suffered chicken pox when you are young, you won't have the chicken pox because you have the immunity for that. Okay. So chicken pox, measles selected uh, uh, invention. So memory T cells. Uh, what about um, um, cytotoxic T cells? CD8 T cells? <coughs> That's a function cytotoxic of lesser. <laughs> With COVID. Yeah, so the, 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 that's why I'm saying certain diseases. So it's not all diseases, but certain diseases, okay? Uh, because of the, the patho, pathogenicity, pathogenicity, virulency, uh, that is, uh, you learn them in immunology, okay, these terminologies, okay? How powerful is the microorganism, okay? So it depends, okay? But for COVID, of course, you can have COVID, then again you have another, Episode of COVID. So One hour twenty-seven. Okay. Cytotoxic T cells, as the name suggests, cytotoxic, it means that these cells they destroy host cells that are infected with uh, microorganisms. So they destroy uh, infected uh, host cells. So that is uh, cytotoxic T cells. Okay, for instance, viruses, they enter cells, okay, they enter cells. And so those cells with viruses, they can be destroyed by CD8 T cells. Uh, CD4 T cells, that's the role of CD4 T cells. T helper cells, as the name suggests, T helper. Sometimes they are used as what? Activation. activation. Okay, to activate an immunity. Okay, to activate an, uh, I mean, uh, an, uh, an immune response. An immune response. Okay. Okay, so T helper cells, as the name suggests, these are cells which help other cells of the immune system in order to fight, uh, to fight back, in order to fight uh, an infection, for instance, or any inflammatory response okay so t helper cells they are at the center of the immune system they are at the center of the immune system and so they are very very important cells in the body okay they are very very important uh, for immune system okay uh, in order for immune system to be strong you require t cells cd4 t cells uh, they are at the center and uh, they, they orchestrate the immune, the immunity. Okay? So they are like number uh, number six in the football pitch, or they are like an atom uh, in your cousin. <laughs> yes. So they are very powerful. Uh, CD4 T cells. Okay. Uh, that's why if your CD4 count drops drastically, it means that the immunity is compromised, and so you can catch infection easily. Okay. That's why they need to be boosted. Okay. Once the CD4 normal range for CD4 count 
Vous êtes content, vous êtes content, vous êtes content, vous êtes content, vous No more range. No, there's an answer. Yes, sir. 502. To, to, to how much? 1,000. Okay, you're almost there. 1,000 what? 400. Okay, so 500 to 1,500. Somewhere within this is considered normal. Okay? Okay. So that's the normal count. Okay, good. So we have done the agranulocytes, agranulocytes, and the monocytes. What's the role of monocytes? Monocytes. So monocytes, they convert to if the message comes. macrophages. Uh, they convert to macrophages. Monocytes, they are found in the blood vessels. But when the, the moment monocytes comes out of a blood vessel, it becomes a macrophage. Okay? So monocytes, they are called monocytes because they are within a blood vessel, they are in the blood. The moment they come out, they become macrophages and uh, they help with phagocytosis. Now, depending on the site or location where these uh, monocytes have come out from, Okay, so if you come out and they are found in the liver, copper cells. In the skin, lung cells. In the CNS, microglial cells. Uh, in, the, in the general tissue, histiocytes. Histiocytes. Okay, histiocytes. Okay, and so on and so forth. So they are basically, uh, and they are involved in chronic inflammation. Monocytes are involved in chronic inflammation. We go to granulocytes. I tell you, I tell you. Robin, I tell you, we stay warm. When you see us, you see a dopamine. A dopamine needs to be done. Yes, that was the hand. Yes, yes. Oh, it came out. It was about 14 days. Yeah, it came out 14 days. So, it's time to get it. So, it's time to get it. Let's start with the general tissue. Okay, so the general tissue is the general tissue. The macrophages will become giant. Okay. Yeah. Some, depending on the response, they are responding to an inflammatory response. So some of them become bigger than the monocyte itself. Yeah, so the monocytes, the small ones in the blood vessels, they come out, they increase the size, release a number of chemicals uh, in order to respond to an inflammation that is chronic. For instance, if you have TB, the TB is a chronic disease. for a long time to suffer from TB. Okay, yeah, so we, we need to finish. Oh, it's not already been Okay. okay. Um, yeah. The granulocytes. Granulocytes. How many types? Three types. Three types. What are the names of granulocytes? Yes, sir. Neutral fields. Neutral fields. Neutral fields. <laughs> and LCD. LCD. <laughs> Okay, so these are already there. So, neutrophils, neutrophils. Those are, are granulocytes. Those are granulocytes. Okay? And we can use the granules. We can see they have granules. Those dots, dots, dots uh, are representing granules. Okay, of course, uh, uh, we look here, we 
system. Uh, we can say the arrangement of nuclei is different in each type of uh, uh, granulocyte. But we're not going to look into the detail of the arrangement of uh, nuclei, how many segments, and so on. That one will come under blood. For now, just appreciate that these cells they have granules. And you can use the granules to stain them. So, yeah, they are so acidophilic. For instance, they like this type of uh, dyes, basic dyes, mm -hmm. like basic dyes. Very good. Baso they like basic dyes, and so they that's stain the nucleus, basophilic. Because it's acidic. They stain basophilic, and that's why the name is basophilic. Mm. Basophilic. Acidophilic uh, 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 name. Okay. Elsnop, Elsnop use these ones like what? Acidic. Acidic. Acid. So they are acidophilic. Acidophilic. And so, yeah, when they stain, you are going, uh, you are going to use uh, uh, an acidophilic stain. You get to stain them. Okay. That's why best of use. Best, yeah, they are called best of use for basic dye. So if I'm going to use H and E. The hematoxin will stain basophils, the eosin will stain uh, eosinophils. Okay, eosinophils. Okay? Yeah. In terms of appearance, basophils will appear, will appear basic. What is the basic color in H&E stains? Purple. Purple or blue. Okay? What about eosinophils? This will appear what? Red or pink, okay? But neutral fuse, they are neutral. That's why they are called neutral fuse. Okay, so the color is not red, uh, like red or pink or blue, or just they are in the middle. Okay, so they are neutral, neutral fuse. Functions, place of use, they are involved in what? Actions. of things are, are involved in allergic reactions. If you are, if you are allergic, let's say to, uh, to pork or to carpenter, whichever one, okay? The first time that uh, you are exposed to that substance, you are going to be sensitized. You are going to be sensitized. And so uh, what will happen there is that uh, your body will generate antibodies in form of Ig. Which, which antibodies are involved in alleg allergic reactions? <coughs> IgE. So IgE is allergies. So if you're allergic, it means the body will generate IgE antibodies specific for that substance. Let's say specific for pork or specific for carpenter. Okay? The pork and the carpenter, those are antigens. Those are antigens into your body. Okay? So now antibodies will be generated of YGE, which will bind on those uh, substances. An antigen antibody uh, complex is going to be formed. Okay, and then uh, the IgE antibodies are going to bind uh, on vesophils as well as mast cells. Okay, I can discuss mast cells together with vesophils because they are similar. Mast cells and vesophils, they are similar in terms of shape and function. The only difference is that uh, mast cells, they are found outside the blood system, outside uh, blood vessels. Vessel fields, they are found within the blood vessel. But it's the same function, uh, they have a similar function. Okay, so uh, the IgE antibodies are going to find on these cells in readiness for your next exposure. So now you can going to, so in the first one, when you are being sensitized, you are not going to have a reaction. There will be no reaction, no rush, no what, you will just be okay. But the second time now, when you have to eat the same substance which you are allergic to, because now you already have the IgE antibodies for that, what will happen is that the antigen is going to bind on the IgE antibodies on these cells, and degranulation is going to take place the granules will degenerate and release chemicals, release substances. Which substances are of importance in these cells? In the vessel fuels, muscles, which substance? Yes, sir. 
Okay, they have a parinfant, what the one I'm looking for. Histamine. Okay, histamine. So histamine is going to be released from these cells. What the now? What is histamine? Is the vaso dilate. What the now? What if you're not going to blood vessels? <laughs> blood goes more to that site where there is inflammation. It appears uh, extremely <coughs> reddish and so on. Okay. Then you develop rash and so on and so forth. So it's histamine. That's why uh, if you want to treat uh, allergies, we use drugs such as uh, such as piriton. Piriton, uh, generic name of pheromone. Okay, it's a drug that blocks histamine. So it blocks histamine released from these uh, uh, cells and reduces the allergic reaction. Okay, so. Uh, Row of vesicles, row of muscles. They are involved in allergic reactions. What about neutrophils? Neutrophils, these ones, they are involved in acute inflammation. They are like the first cells uh, to defend you when there is an inflammation. So they are involved in uh, uh, acute inflammation. Okay, and. Uh, the phagocytosides, the phagocytosides, foreign substances such as microorganisms and so on. Uh, Eosinophils, these ones are involved in parasitic infections, parasites. When parasites invade your body, eosinophils protect you against these parasites, worms and so on. Okay, I'm sure we did the uh, worms and so on in the first, in the first year. Mm. <laughs> so this one, the osteoclast, microbiome, all these we have, we have covered. They are macrophages. They are macrophages for phagocytosis. What about, um, okay, adipocytes, I've already highlighted adipocytes when we are looking at adipose tissue, the brown and white, okay, okay. Fibroblasts, we know the function. Chondroblasts, what's the role of chondroblasts? To produce the matrix in the cartridge, isn't it? So chondroblasts form uh, cartridge matrix. Just like osteoblasts, they form bone matrix. Okay? Osteoblasts form bone matrix. Chondroblasts form matrix. That's extracellular matrix. Okay? Uh, chondrocytes, they stabilize or maintain the cartridge matrix. Chondrocytes maintain the cartridge matrix. Osteocytes maintain the bone matrix. Maintain the bone matrix. Okay, so we have covered uh, this as well. Okay. Remember, these are not really connective tissue cells, endothelial cells. Mesothelial cells, they line, they line what? Serous cavities. Line serous cavities. Uh, how many types of serous cavities do we have? Body? <laughs> How many times? Yes. Yes, yes. but this has been two oh, really? What are the names? One. What are the names of the serous cavities? Serous cavities. Okay. Serous cavities. Yeah. What are the names? Hey. Bing. Hey. <laughs> 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 yeah, so we have the pleural cavities, pleural cavities around the lungs, pleural cavities around the lungs. The peritoneum. Peritoneal cavity in the abdomen, peritoneal cavity Captain. in the abdomen. Pericardial cavity around the heart, pericardial cavity around the heart, and... Come again. Come on. Which one? Yeah. Grand 